Well, I'm Zach Ewing, sports editor at the Bakersfield, California, and I'm here with Bakersfield Jam new coach Chris Gent, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Jam's upcoming season, which is just a couple of months away. Uh, Chris, thanks for joining us, first of all. Oh, thanks. Good to be here. We appreciate you uh, coming into Bakersfield and coming in downtown here to the Californian. I know this is a new step in your career. You've been a little bit of everywhere. You've coached LeBron James. You've won an NBA title. You've been at Ohio State. You've been in Florida. Uh, the, this is a new era for you as far as the D-League and as far as Bakersfield. What brings you here? Well, the interest in being a head coach, you know, um, first speaking with the Suns and with the Bakersfield Jam and, and getting involved in the process of them looking for a head coach and was really intrigued and excited about the opportunity and the prospect of being a head coach here. And, uh, and that is going to be a new step as well, to be a head coach, something you've always wanted to do, or uh, you've been an assistant for a long time, so obviously you were pretty content with that, but was this always on the radar or is something that's come lately in your career? Yeah, I've, I've always wanted to be a head coach. I think, you know, you, you're, you build towards that. At least that's the way I approach my job as an assistant, um, not only trying to help your boss, your head coach, but also trying to develop your techniques and the type of coach you want to be when you're in that chair. Just looking through Coach Gent's bio here, uh, you started, I guess, your, your basketball career, at least publicly, you were in Orange, California, so Southern California guy. You went to Ohio State, uh, went to some NCAA tournaments, won some Big Ten championships. That's really where it all gets started, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, for, I think for any athlete, it starts young. You know, like you kind of find that that's what you really want to do, whether it be that you have a talent for it or just a desire to be a ball player. So it starts young, and then that sport takes you on, on a lot of different journeys. Now, what kind of player were you? I know you, you, you coached a guy in LeBron who was probably a little bit more versatile than you. What was your specialty? My specialty was shooting. Um, yeah, I grew up in New Jersey. I was born in California, but spent okay. uh, most of my life in New Jersey growing up, and uh, I could shoot the ball from any, any, anywhere within kind of the half-court area. You got me on the offensive side of the half-court. Somebody's got to pay shot. attention to you, huh? Someone's yeah. got to pay attention. That, Find a lefty. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you, you left Ohio State in 92. You played uh, professionally for several years, including a couple in the NBA. You're not wearing your ring, though, from the 94 Rockets. How, no. often, how often do you bust that out? You know, I wear it occasionally. I'll bust it out, typically for, like, big occasions, you know, like weddings and things like okay. that, but uh, interviews. When you're <laughs> oh, feeling man, depressed, man. just pick it out and look yeah, at it. Exactly. Remember, just, yeah, exactly. Just gaze at it for a minute. What was that like? Uh, it's It's been a while now, but to, to sort of – be in that atmosphere on that roster with those guys who, who go on to win an NBA title? Yeah, I think um, just experiencing what it takes and understanding that no matter what you do, no matter how, how successful you are within a sport, you're going to have ups and downs. And there were a lot of moments where that team could have given up. And we had opportunities. We, we didn't take advantage of some opportunities in some games, but we responded in a huge way. And it was led by our leadership, which was the coaching staff, and with our best players, and our best player, and Akeem Olajuwon. And uh, he didn't sweat much. You know, he was very confident, <laughs> and he was just like, it's going to be okay. You know, we're down 0-2, going to Phoenix, and we'll be fine. And, you know, you see him like that, and it's contagious. Absolutely. The dream, a, a, a legend you got to play with. And uh, at that point, are you, are you already thinking coaching as a player? Were you one of those players who always wanted to coach when you were done playing? Uh, or, or did that was that more of an accidental happenstance? Hey, I became a coach. I liked to coach even when I was a kid. You know, I used to like to coach youth sport. I, I, I would you know make some money by officiating and doing those things. But I enjoyed coaching kids, you know, and, and still staying attached with the game. And it was different sports that I would coach as well. So I think it came from a couple of things. Uh, I had really good coaching as a kid. Okay. I was exp my high school coach was great. I got to spend a lot of time with uh, Coach Bobby Hurley in New Jersey, who's another great coach. Sure. So I think it started to develop pretty early. Is there a, a coach you sort of model your philosophy after, or have you, have you taken bits and pieces from different guys? Yeah, I've taken bits and pieces, both from playing and the styles that I like to play in and how I like to play and also what I think is most effective, you know, what can win you sure. games. And, and there's certainly a, a way to do that, but also in guys I've played for, both here and abroad. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about your coaching experience. You, you did go, you coached at Ohio State, but most of your coaching career has been in the pros, including, I think, th what the, what the layperson would want to know is, hey, you coached LeBron James in Cleveland in his first stint in Cleveland. What was that like? It was great. I mean, it was, it was nice knowing you had a chance to win every time you walked sure. on the floor. I tell you that much. Knowing that guy can win you a game is pretty special, especially at that level. Uh -huh. uh, but growing with him as a coach and seeing him grow as a player – and getting to know him really well, 
um, both as a person, as a player. It, it was great, and, and just seeing what makes him tick, tick, and also know that you're helping him. Sure, you know, knowing that you're you're being helping him be productive on the floor. What what part of LeBron's game did did Chris Gent help develop? I, I helped him mostly with his jump shot. Okay. Um, Which, by the way, has improved greatly throughout his career. I think. Yeah, yeah. it's it's he's had some great moments, and he's a little tune up, you know, and uh, he's got to get back uh, back to getting that balance again, and he will. I think he's just had so much other. His game has expanded mm-hmm. so much, but uh, you know, just trying to help him see the game um, and also find other ways to score. You know, be more effective score from all parts on the floor. When you find yourself with young players last year with the Kings or, or before in your career. Uh, do you have that automatic street cred because, A, the NBA title, B, I coach LeBron? I mean, do you bring these things up? Do, do, do the guys know that about you? Um, they know a little bit about it. You know, uh, the, thing that, the thing that guys are most aware of in the NBA is, is your investment. Like, are, are you fully vested sure. in them? And are you truthful and honest? And can you be trusted? You know, the, those, those things that you kind of take for granted, hey, you know, but that really matters to those guys. And, and when they see that you're like that, you know, whatever your street cred is or whatever, they, they're accepting of you. And the guy who was here last year coaching Bakersfield, Nate Bjorker, and I think that's one area he excelled in in the D-League. And that's especially true, I think, in the, in the development league. You, you almost have to shepherd these guys because they're trying to get some more individually while you're trying to have team success. Sometimes those can be two different goals. What's your philosophy on the D-League and how you manage that? Yeah, that's, that pretty much sums it up as far as the, the approach and the mindset. It's that balance. Can you find that healthy balance of improving individual, both through your skill instruction your concept of the game, your film work, how to be a pro. And then when you step on the floor, it's not all about you. It's about us trying to win a ball game and you making your teammates better at both ends. So it's, it's a tough balance, but if guys are really, truly invested in the game, it, it, it's an easy sell. This year's team, I know the roster is still very much in flux. With You haven't had a draft yet and who the Suns send down here or who they sign and, and what Bubba decides to do as the GM of the gym. Uh, d- what do you know anything about your roster, first of all, and what kind of team would you like to build here? Um, it's unknown about the team, only mm-hmm. because you don't know the, if guys are going to make you know, the NBA teams. You or know, go overseas. It, yeah, you, you don't know. You sure. have an idea because of the rights that you hold of players. So you have a potential team there and some guys you think that will be playing for you. But you don't know that much. What type of team – do you want to have you, – you ultimately want to have a team that complements one another. You want to be well-rounded and a hard-working, hard-playing team. So if you get those things and you might get variations of right. that, you get those, you, you're going to have success. Uh, and as the team comes together very quickly over the next couple of months, what will be your plan as far as – shoot, you have a draft, I think, end of October, and then the season starts end of November. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of time with these guys. You really have to hone in on, on those 10 days. Those 10 days of camp that you're going to get before the season starts, you need to be focused, you need to be on point, and you have to make it very clear what you want out of the team right away. And you have to drill and work on it and try to get there as quickly as possible. I think uh, Bakersfield has been known as a good landing spot for a coach in the D-League because you have your own facility, your own weight room. Uh, your own offices. A lot of D League teams have to share these sort of things. Was that an advantage for you? Did you uh, did you look at that coming in, saying that's a place I want to be? Oh yeah. When when I was I was coming through Bakersfield and I stopped a, c- a couple months ago mm-hmm. and, and met with David Higdon and and he showed me the facilities and I was blown away as far as the potential that you have here. Um, just being singular, you know, you can guys can shoot whenever they want. You can move your practice times around. Sometimes, you know, your travel schedule is tough, and sure. it allows you some flexibility. Having that weight room, just everything is really is built so that you can be successful. Well, before we let you go, uh, Coach, let, let's talk about Chris Gent, the person, a little bit. Tell us about uh, your your personal life. When did you move to Bakersfield? Do you plan on getting a place here? And your impressions of, of everything. Yeah, I don't know much about Bakersfield. Um, I'll be here. Uh, my family is staying in Sacramento, okay. where uh, where we're living right now. Um, it's short enough where I can be that occupational bachelor and kind of sure. work back and forth and see my family. I'm a family man. I've got three children. How and, old are they? Uh, I have a 19, 10, and 8 years old. Oh, you're so, all over the map. Yeah, all yeah. over the map. Got one in college, and uh, two are doing well in school. So, um, you know, that's kind of my world. 
uh, my family and our dog, family dog, just, uh, you know, being a group, it's, it's uh, pretty important to me. Let's see. It's, it's like 106 here in September. It's not that hot in Sacramento, is it? It's warm this week. Yeah. It wasn't last week. It was a, a bit cooler, but right. it's, it's hot. But the thing about Sacramento is so much different. It cools down at night. Sure. I mean, it's a little bit different this week, but typically, you know, you get that 68, 69 at night, even if it's 95 during the day, which is, which is nice. You get the relief. So the gents will be buzzing up and down the 99 freeway like a lot of the rest of us do. For, <laughs> yes, we will. For, for this winter. That's good to know. <laughs> well, Chris Gent, we appreciate you joining us. And uh, hey, good luck this season. I know you've got a lot of running around to do in the next six weeks or so. Or, I guess it's more than 10 weeks before the season starts. Yeah. Luckily, it's not six yet. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we do appreciate you joining us, and we'll, uh, we'll be following the Bakersfield Jam all winter long here at the Bakersfield Californian.